let's talk about Devin Haney now. Devin Haney, you're pathetic. You're dancing around in the bowling alley because you got your decision reversed? Bro, you just do not sell. So, yup, that just about does it. Oscar De La Hoya absolutely violates Devin Haney. All right, guys, everybody talked about Ryan Garcia. Now it's Papi's turn. So, first of all, I don't condone pets whatsoever, period. But let's talk about the inconsistencies, the penalties, the millions of dollars. I do not understand it. We should have a commission, okay, that oversees everything, every state, because Canelo Alvarez gets popped in a different state, gets six months. Shane Mosley gets popped and gets zero. So you're telling me that Ryan Garcia gets a year and millions of dollars? That is not right. Let's talk about Devin Haney now. Devin Haney, you're pathetic. You're dancing around in the bowling alley because you got your decision reversed. Nobody's gonna forget about that beating you took. Oh, and let's not forget, you're accusing me of not paying you? Bro, you just do not sell. That's the bottom line. You can audit my company anytime you want. I pay every fighter, and I'm pretty sure you got that from Canelo, what he started. So bro, that one year layoff, that retirement, just enjoy it. Fuck you. They say if you don't got nothing nice to say, you don't say anything at all. Now, De La Hoya just went nuclear on Devin Haney. He says that he doesn't condone PEDs at all. He's never been about that. And you can pretty much vouch for, vouch for Oscar De La Hoya because he ended up fighting a fighter who tested positive, and that was Fernando Vargas, who tested positive. But unlike Devin Haney, who got beat by the guy who tested positive off Austerine, Oscar De La Hoya got the knockout over Fernando Vargas. But let's get into it. Oscar De La Hoya, you guys seen the clip. He called Devin Haney pathetic for posting the video, now infamous video, at the bowling alley where he was dancing when it was announced that Ryan Garcia and his fight was overturned from the New York State Athletic Commission. And I said, dang says people will also remember and always remember the beatdown on April 20th. So let me get into the direct quotes in case you had any difficulties understanding what he was saying. He said, all right, guys, everybody talked about Ryan Garcia. Now it's Poppy's turn. So first of all, I don't condone PEDs whatsoever, period. But let's talk about the inconsistencies, the penalties, the millions of dollars. I do not understand it. We should have a commission, okay, that oversees everything from every state because Canelo Alvarez, he got popped, meaning Canelo tested positive for clenbuterol, and it was in a different state. Canelo gets six months. He says Shane Mosley gets popped, and he gets zero penalty. So you're telling me that Ryan Garcia gets a year, plus he owes millions of dollars? That is not right. Let's talk about Devin Haney now. And this is the part specifically where he goes in on Devin Haney. He said, Devin Haney, you're pathetic. You're dancing around in the bowling alley because you got your decision, your decision reversed. Nobody's going to forget about that beating that you took. Oh, and let's not forget, you're accusing me of not paying you, bro. You just do not sell. That's the bottom line. Wow. So the claws are out. The talons are out. He says, you're accusing me of not paying you, bro, but you just do not sell. And that's the bottom line because the Stone Cold said so. He says, you do not sell. That's the bottom line. You can audit my company anytime you want. I pay every fighter, and I'm pretty sure you got that from Canelo, what he started. So he's basically saying, because Canelo said that 
at the Mungia fight week that Oscar's robbing his fighters. He says, so bro, take that one year layoff, that, re that retirement, just enjoy it. F you. And then Oscar De La Hoya, he flips off the camera and like kind of walks off. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, boxing is a cruel sport. I told you guys that from the beginning and now you're seeing it. When you're on top, you're on top. When you're winning, you're winning. Everything is hunky-dory. Everything is peachy keen when you are winning. You get to see what it really is when you lose, when you take a loss like Devin Haney. And I think that's truly what's happening right now. Devin Haney is going to be very interesting to see how and if he bounces back because he's facing real life, real life adversity. And he's the one that didn't test positive, but Ryan Garcia did. But the way he's going about certain things, it got people who are just, you know, feeling the type of way. So he's like, take your retirement, enjoy, F you. And he's, he's Oscar said that you're pathetic. Now, the great Ego Stradamus continues to strike again. I told you that dancing video was a bad look for Devin Haney. You have Devin Haney who, who he, you know, he's trying to act like kind of like a tough tough guy he said his dad says he's from Oakland and you you kind of want to be the culture like hip-hop and stuff like that but then you're talking about lawsuits and suing Ryan Garcia right initially you said you didn't even want a rematch on ESPN it's on tape we all seen it now you're coming back saying you want it back in blood and Ryan's gonna pay inside and outside of the ring on a brand new interview with Ariel Hawani. Before that, you're talking about my lawyers and team will, you know, do what they gotta do. So it's like, this has almost caused Devin Haney to have a Britney Spears type of meltdown. Leave Britney alone! Where he's all over the place. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'm the best in the business and it's not even close. What he's saying doesn't even add up. He's doing interviews and or posts where he's saying that Ryan Garcia deserves a longer ban. Him and his dad have also said that Ryan Garcia deserves a lifetime ban, right? So because of the first time offense with the Osterine, Ryan Garcia deserves to be banished, shunned, and completely removed from the sport for eternity, indefinitely. Right? This is what Devin Haney and Bill Haney have said. But here's the thing. How are you saying that you want it back in blood and you want to rematch him, but then you're also pushing for a lifetime sus suspension or expulsion of the fighter? Like, this doesn't even make sense. If you truly wanted to get it back in blood, you would do like Miguel Cotto when he felt he was cheated by Anto Antonio Margarito with the pal the plaster of Paris. You're talking about suing. You're talking about... And it's funny because Devin's tagline is they say everything but let's fight. Initially, Devin Haney wasn't saying anything about a rematch. He was like, I don't know right now. And the way I'm feeling, I'm not seeing a rematch. And then he received so much backlash for saying that. People were just like, fight him again, but just make sure he's clean and does and pass all the drug tests, right? And... Then Devin Haney kind of changed his tune. So it's just a lot of complaining. They said, Team Haney said they couldn't continue with any fight negotiations until Ryan was banned and that was concluded. Well, I believe it was last Thursday, they came out with Ryan's punishment. Devin was doing this video where he's like dancing in a bowling alley to Rick James and it is is unrhythmic dancing. And he seemingly was happy that Ryan Garcia got suspended. And that's why Oscar De La Hoya is saying that was pathetic. But the point is, why all this complaining? You said you couldn't continue your career or any kind of fight negotiations until that was known what was going to happen to Ryan Garcia. 
Now we know, and then you still vacated your belt instead of fighting your mandatory Sandor Martin. Now Devin Haney is getting on social media and also Ariel Hawani's show, and he's saying stuff that doesn't make sense. He's saying because Ryan finessed him with weight or whatever reason, when he comes back, he's not competing in weight classes. He's merely fighting at whatever weight he chooses. What gives you this godlike ability and right because Ryan wronged you and had Austrian in his system? Now you feel you can do whatever you want and rules don't apply to you and you don't need to weigh in? Like, that just sounds like a cop out. That sounds really weird that Devin Haney is saying this. But I think the real issue is you look at this picture, he looks huge. He looks very big. So I think Devin Haney knows 140 is going to be a struggle and you feel finesse because Ryan Garcia missed weight by 3.2 pounds and did what he did to you. So as a result, now it's like triggered you and made you feel a type of way like, hey, he did this to me. So going forward, you know, I don't care. See right there. I'll be back in one year. I had all the belts already. From now on, I'm fighting at whatever weight I choose. No longer fighting in weight classes. And he reaffirmed this and stated this again on Ariel Hawani's show, the MMM, the MMA Hour. It makes no sense. Sandor Martin or Liam Paro or Richardson Hitchens or Subrio Matias, Gary Antoine Russell, Pueyo, whoever you fight next, especially since Ryan is suspended, they didn't do anything to you. They didn't test positive. So why do you get to fight at whatever weight you want? And then now you have Oscar De La Hoya who's roasting you and saying, hey, audit my company. You simply can't sell. So again, as I've always stated, where does Devin Haney get this audacity to feel that he could just move how he wants? Who's going to pay for that? What network is going to promote it? The crazy thing is every single promoter that has worked with Devin Haney has now questioned his ability to draw his drawing power or his ability to sell. This is not my opinion. These are the facts. Bob Arum, Eddie Hearn, and Oscar De La Hoya now, right? Boom. We got action. You never know. Bob Arum on Teofimo Lopez's option. Bob Arum previously said, Devin Haney doesn't mean much. He's not an attraction like Javante Davis or Ryan Garcia, right? So, Bob Arum and Top Rank previously worked with Devin Haney for three fights, the Lomachenko fight, controversial, and then two Cambosis fights. So Devin Haney was temporarily signed for three fights to Top Rank, and he's been on record saying that the Haney program, the numbers for pay-per-view were low. When I reported that, because all of the reports indicated, Dan Raphael, Leonard Ellerby, everybody was indicating the numbers were low, you had Bill Haney and you had YouTube content creators and Haneyak channels and Haneyak content creators who were kicking and screaming and lying and saying that the numbers were these great numbers for a pro grade fight. And I told you, for me, that didn't really make sense. It was on the zone and pro grade was coming off a bad performance with Zorilla you really want me to believe that it did better than Devin Haney on ESPN fighting Lomachenko for Undisputed at the previous division at 135? And people know who Lomachenko is. And it just, I have a hard time believing that fight did equal to a fight on ESPN with the known respected name like Lomachenko. Pro Greg coming off a bad performance at home in New Orleans did the same numbers. But so Bob Arum, he's our record. Eddie Hearn, he says, we weren't bidding on the Sandor Martin fight. We don't have a contract with him. He says, do I want to lose a million plus dollars on Devin Haney? No, thank you very much. And then now you have Oscar De La Hoya, who's challenging Devin Haney. And he's like, yo, the bottom line is you don't sell. You can audit my company. You getting online, you and Ryan have been getting online stating that I owe you money and that's simply not true, come audit me and we'll show you the, I guess, the financials, right? 
And now we get this information. According to Steve Kim, he has sources and they said he said that he believes they're reliable. They said this event, Haney Garcia, did less than 400 K. So maybe that's why Oscar is saying that you don't sell because Ryan Garcia definitely carried the whole promotion and was the, the name, even though he was acting weird. He probably drew, you know, much of the audience. So the walls are definitely coming crashing down and closing in on Devin Haney for a lot of the lies and what Devin has been built at. He's a good fighter, but Bill Haney said the Mayweather era is over. Gervonta Davis era is over, but he continues to not really be able to sell and do these numbers. And this is what I said from the beginning. This is what happens when you cloud chase Tank Davis. Gervonta Davis was built over time gradually, and he just became the face of boxing. PBC, Al Heyman at a point, Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellerby, everybody that's handled his career, Calvin Ford, Coach K, they put in the work to help Tank get, and then Tank put in the work with his style, with his performances, with his you know ability to sell and tap in with the culture. Devin Haney tried to shortcut that. And they just wanted to talk it up and say Tank Davis era is over and this and that. And this is what I told you. Now you got Bob Arum, Eddie Hearn, and now De La Hoya, who have all been on record saying that Devin Haney can't draw flies to ish. You know what I mean? All right, guys. Every it's a bad look. It's a bad look. And I posted this. I said, laughing my soft. See what happens when you try to be buddy buddy with everyone. So what am I referring to? Weeks after the fight with Ryan Garcia, this is before we knew Ryan Garcia had Osterine in his system. Devin Haney posted this. He hadn't really done any interviews. It was an embarrassing loss at the time. And he said, hey, I'm running in my neighborhood and look who I see playing golf. And he took a picture with Oscar De La Hoya. Fast forward to the future. You done accused him of not paying you properly. Look, he's smiling because he hadn't done no interviews at this point. So Devin Haney trying to be buddy buddy and like, oh, I just ran into Oscar De La Hoya. And then fast forward to the future. Oscar's flaming you and saying, F you, you can edit my books. You can audit my books, but you simply can't sell. Don't blame me. And you're pathetic and stuff like that. So Devin Haney is definitely learning a hard lesson. Eddie Hearn kind of when he as soon as he lost to Ryan Garcia, because initially it was it was a loss. The way it's viewed by the public, they're still viewing it as a loss. So I know it's overturned now, but I'm just going off of the public, like cons like the public perspective of it. But the point is, Eddie Hearn, he got Jerome Boots in his now. So he doesn't seem to be as bothered with Devin Haney securing Devin Haney's next fight. And he was open, he was very candid. It was respectful, and I understood what he was saying because he was saying from the business perspective, but it must suck to be Devin Haney. But Devin Haney didn't attack Eddie Hearn, right? He wants to attack YouTubers and people like random fans, but then you got the promoters who keep saying you can't sell too. And then in the MMA Hour interview, Devin Haney says that he plans on working with Eddie Hearn again. And he was like, oh, that's just Eddie Hearn's opinion. And he's like, oh, I wasn't mad. But he said, I should have bid on the fight myself. Devin is in no man's land. I'm telling you what it is. If you guys hate it or love it, he's in no man's land. Every time he does interviews or posts something, the comments are vicious, truly vicious. People are turning like, you know, the promoter saying, hey, you can't sell. Everything was good for the buildup, but now you're seeing what it is. And now he's left in shambles to pick up the pieces. And that's just what it is. That's the game we're in. It's a cutthroat business. And Floyd Mayweather said this to Bill Haney when he was talking to him on the FaceTime. He was like, you don't want to go around creating a bunch of enemies in this industry because that'll come back to bite you. And that's what it looks like the Haney's have done, right? They've created these obstacles like Beef tried to make Javante Davis 
public enemy number one and constantly like working with content creators to bash Javante Davis and things like that. Javante Davis continues to skyrocket and incline and he might fight Lomachenko, who Devin Haney fought. And if he does better than Devin Haney, which I'm picking he, him to do, I think if Lomachenko and Tank happens, I think Tank will knock him out or at least win. You know what I mean? So he's going to continue to skyrocket. And then Devin's talking about suing and taking a year or two off. It's just a mess. And again, now you have De La Hoya who's throwing you under the bus. Eddie Hearn threw you under the bus. All the promoters throw you under the bus. And you have Devin Haney who's saying, he's trying to clear his name. He said, hey, I'm not a, a BZ or a Ussy. I never called him that. You know, he's a fighter. You got to respect him as a fighter. But the fact that you are you have to explain that you're not a B-I-T-C-H and stuff, it just, why are you online at this point? I really don't understand it. It seems like you're a millionaire. You always flex the money angle. Probably just take some time off to consider some things. But to each his own, he could do whatever he wants. He's a grown man. Devin Haney got a lot to consider right now. He, he he doesn't seem to have that many allies in the game. Eddie Hearn threw him under the bus. Bob Arum previously threw him under the bus. Bob Arum probably feels the type of way too because most people believe that he was going to go to top rank and possibly fight Sandor Martin and then the T.O. Fimo. So now him becoming a champion in recess and saying he's going to sit on the sidelines, what does he do? Like, who is he going to fight? You evaded, you avoided and evaded your mandatory Sandor Martin Golden Boy is talking bad about you. Eddie Hearn kind of talked bad at you. Who, who are you going to work? Who are you going to work with? You know what I mean? Lots, lots going on right now. And Oscar De La Hoya didn't make it any worse or any better for Devin Haney in terms of Devin Haney's stock growing. Again, this is what happens you take when you take something out the oven that's not fully cooked. You ever have like a TV dinner and you put it in the microwave and you're so impatient, you take it out a little prematurely and it's cold in the middle still. That's Devin Haney. He could have continued to build and grow and get his star power and his brand up, but they tried to rush it. They tried to compete with Gervonta Davis and now they took it out the oven. They took it out the microwave too quick. And I don't see how you can even catch Tank Davis at this point. People didn't seen the sparring from the Mayweather gym. People are clowning you for the Ryan Garcia fight. People are looking at you different since the Ryan Garcia fight. Promoters are not bidding on your fights. Other promoters that have worked with you are saying that you can't sell. How, like I said, you can't Bill Haney yourself out of this one. Where's Bill Haney with those caption videos? Do one of those videos now about, oh, Ryan has shade hair butter in his hair and lotion in his hair and stuff like that these little comedy skits that's not enough this needs a serious like rebuilding of brand haney just my thoughts